Sick of reading your insider trading policy? Well, guess what? Your officers, directors, and employees are too, to the extent any of them actually read your policy at all. How many employees do you really think read your policy? None, most likely. It's legal mumbo jumbo, right? Well, now there are things you can do to make your insider trading policy more inviting, perhaps even lovable. Learn about my radical, radical suggestions about how you can change that policy's frowns upside down today on Zippy Point. I'm Brock Romanek. I'm a big fan of you. So I'm going to try not to laugh my way through this video because this is radical man anyways when it comes to the art of drafting insider trading policies you can make these five changes to really set yourself apart from the pack with a next gen version that should really resonate with your intended audience those covered by the policy my five recommendations are one make it a real compliance document not cya two start with a purpose preamble three add a set of faqs Four, evolve the formatting. Five, offer it in video and audio too. One, make it a real compliance document, not CYA. So there's a reason why no one reads a company's insider trading policy. It's written for lawyers. It's a document to be shared with regulators in the courts to prove that the company has a compliance culture so that the, so that the company doesn't get into trouble when an, an employee ventures off into the wilderness and makes an illegal insider trade. Your policy can still serve this purpose, yet also meet the goal of stopping employees from breaking the law in the first place. In fact, if your policy is inviting, I imagine a court might find the policy more to their liking than if it's a staid CYA document, if it's a legal mumbo jumbo. So I view these policies the way I view disclaimers, make them understandable by the general public, and it'll be better for all parties involved. Two, start with a purpose preamble. Why not let your employees know that the primary goal of the policy is to keep them out of trouble? State that up front in plain English. Let them know that insider trading is a real crime, that people go to jail, lose their jobs, their reputation, and commiserate that you know it feels counterintuitive to the way the rest of the world works, where people gain advantages all the time based on some hot tips that provide some sort of advance warning, tipping them off. A house is about to go on the market that's not yet on the market. A job opening that will open soon at a place you want to go to, and you know someone that works there and knows that that opening is going to happen, but it's not open yet. And that's how it is. You're not allowed to trade on material, not public information. That's the law. So be bold and give your pet answer when someone gives you a story about why they should be allowed to trade. Say in this preamble, in the policy, that unfortunately, I have to say this all the time. I know you'll be mad at me, but despite your need for money to buy a house, to pay tuition, whatever the case, you cannot trade on material non-public information. Be informal like that in the policy itself, in a box that sort of separates, it, <laughs> separates from the legal mumbo jumbo. Scare them. Scare them too. Tell them that the SEC will find them. Tell them tell them that the SEC is sophisticated tracking software. And if there's the slightest blip, they will be caught, they, that the SEC will see it. Mention that in the preamble too. And in this preamble, maybe even include links to enforcement actions the SEC has brought against folks that are in companies that got caught. These stories often act, act as good deterrents. I have a separate vid guide with the link to which is below, which tells these stories all neatly in one package. I go category by category, type of officer, directors that have gotten caught by the SEC over the years. Those are message cases. You can include a link to my video in your policy. It actually is a good idea. So bake all, bake all this real world talk right into your policy in the form of a preamble. Three, add a set of FAQs. Why not start off the policy with a brief plain English summary that covers the most common questions you get asked? Really think of the most common questions you get asked all the time and answer them in the summary. You should be able to cut down on the number of questions you get and that would go right after the preamble. I just did you a solid. Four, evolve the formatting. How do you make the policy more inviting? By putting your plain English skills to use. Talk to the people in your communications, your marketing departments, leverage their expertise. You are in effect selling this policy to those covered by it making them aware of it, making them learn it. Some basic techniques to make your policy more usable are using more white space, more enticing formatting. I love me some large font, informational captioning, 
less dense legalese. We live in a 120 character world now where each character really counts. These policies have not caught up. So if you have examples of what constitutes insider trading that you share during your training sessions with insiders, consider repurposing those and placing them in boxes dispersed throughout the policy to amplify various provisions to make the points. Turn your policy into a real teaching and training document. Five, offered in video and audio too. So let's face it, you can make the policy look real nice, like a vacation brochure for the Caymans, and a majority, the, the vast majority of your employees are still not gonna read it. The way to reach most people these days is to offer it in a variety of formats. Why not try video and audio? These are other, these other formats would always refer back to the written document, which would serve as your official policy, but you would have these amplification documents. I mean, you're watching a video right now, right? You prefer video, I would think. So, you know, this is obviously time consuming to do, to put these together, but it doesn't really cost you anything if you do a cheapy version like I'm doing. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in my son's bedroom here. <laughs> well, he moved out seven years ago, so he doesn't mind. So making videos is much easier than you could imagine. This video does prove that. And, and audio is here to stay, whether it be podcasts or the explosive growth of voice assistants like Amazon's Echo, Think Alexa, and Google Assistants. So be a pioneer and lead the way by thinking outside the box and tackling this innovation. Your insiders and employees will be better served by it. And it's actually fun to do. Mm -hmm.